Hi, in this video we will take a look at the new features introduced inside of Mario Extension Pack 4 Update 5. Parts of this video are available as separate tutorials for the individual new features so you can better refer back to them. Before we start, if you're opening an old project that was created without Mario Extension Pack 4 Update 5 and you're using any Extension Pack notes, you will most likely see this Convert Layers dialog when you open the project asking you to make some changes to your project. Usually you want to press convert here because Mari needs to update the code of existing nodes to have the new features that I've introduced instead of Mari Extension Pack 4 Update 5. It is very safe to press convert because there's only been new features added, no existing features have been changed, so there won't be any look change and it's very safe to do convert in this case. Let's get going with some of the new features and we will take a look first at some of the smaller enhancements before we move on to the bigger ones. I have a plane here, non-uniformly scaled plane, and if we take a look at the UVs for this, you can see there are no cuts in between UDIMs, so it's a completely consistent and seamless UV shell that is scaled across multiple UDIMs. If I create an image node and just plug a texture in here and then just view it, we can see our image is repeated and let's create a manifold UV node hook this up and rotate this 90 degrees. And we can see there's no seam in between the different UDIMs, so we have our texture nicely tiling even across multiple UDIMs. However, if I start doing a scale now, let me go back to the auto view so it's better, easier to see. If I start scaling this, you will see that we're scaling with a scale center at the center of each UDIM, which means we were introducing seams along each UDIM line. This is the default behavior of Mario Extension Pack 4, which will always apply UV transformation with a center at the center of the UDIM. However, with Update 5, I've now introduced a Transform Pivot toolbox here inside of the Manifold UV node. And for example, here we can start setting our custom pivots. So if I just do a slight rotation here. You can see I'm rotating around the center. However, if I, for example, change the pivot U and pivot V position, I'm now rotating with a pivot set at the lower left corner of each UDIM. If I set this to zero and rotate, now the pivot is set up here. An additional checkbox has been introduced per UDIM pivot. If we tick this off, any UV transformation will use one common pivot for all UDIMs. So with per UDIM pivot, we have one pivot per UDIM, while with per UDIM pivot off, we have one uniform pivot for all transformations across all UDIMs that sits at the bottom of UDIM 1001. So now if I rotate, you can see I'm not introducing any seams in between UDIMs, and also if I set this to 90 degrees and do some scaling now. There won't be any seams in between UDIMs. And let's take another look at this inside of our UV view. So you see we're compressing more towards this grid line. So everything is uniformly scaled or stretched in this case. And there are no seams. This new per UDIM pivot checkbox has been introduced in quite a number of nodes. So for example, all procedural nodes that come with extension pack now have it. If I create a cloud node and set the scaling a little bit lower, go to the space setting and tick on the UV space. You can see at the moment there is no transformation applied, so we still seamless. But as soon as I go to transform scale and apply a scale and Y, we start to introduce these seams. The new per UDIM pivot checkboxes in the procedurals, they live under the space group as well. So if I tick this off, we can see now again, we're completely seamless. Some other nodes that have this new checkbox are for example, the texture scatter 2Ds. So here this checkbox lives under the UV settings down here. Uh, for example, let's take a look at another procedural here we have the Spotify and again the Space Group and the Per Udem Pivot Box. 
Another smaller improvement made concerns the preset system introduced inside of Mario Exchange Pack 4 Update 4. So the preset system works with the shaders and allows you to set up your shaders quickly and easily by assigning a channel here. So for example, I have a couple of channels assigned and then I saved a preset of this using these preset buttons. And now whenever I create, for example, a V-Ray shader, the shader will be set up again automatically for me. And that also obviously works across projects. A part of this new preset system is a way to isolate materials inside of the node graph. So for example, if I select nodes that have occurrences of these channel names, for example, the diff here is part of this node name and a right mouse click and go to misc, set nodes to shader. Mari will automatically rewire the selected nodes to the active shader, allowing me to view this material in isolation. And I can also obviously select another material and reapply this, set nodes to shader. And now I'm viewing this material. A small enhancement in this latest update of extension pack is that we can now just infinitely toggle back between our last used isolated materials. So for example, if I just go misc, set nodes to shader, we will toggle back to our gold material. And if we execute it again, we will go back to the silver material. A new feature inside of update five is now that we can just reset our shader to the way it was the first time or before the first time we executed set nodes to shader. So if I reset shader now, we will get our original shader system back where we can see all material. So this is a very little change in regards to the handling of this system compared to Mario Extension Pack 4 Update 4. Another smaller improvement in Update 5 concerns the bookmarking systems that had been introduced for the node graph in a previous Extension Pack update. The first notable change is if I create a bookmark node, I now have a new color coding scheme for them just to make them more easily visible and less easily mistaken for out of date bookmarks, sorry, out of date bake points. The bookmarking system previously worked by choosing the right mouse with bookmark section and using cycle forwards and cycle backwards to cycle through the different bookmark nodes. However, we also now have an interface where we can directly jump to a specific bookmark and we have some filtering options. For example, we can use the arrow keys and return to directly jump to a bookmark. So let me try this again and not choose one that is already visible. So now I can quickly jump around the node graph using the system. There's no hotkey assigned to this by default for these. So you would have to go to the shortcut section, my extension pack, node graph, bookmarks, and assign one that you like. You can also obviously choose the node graph context. So the bookmark um, shortcut would only work inside of the node graph and not, for example, if your cursor is in the viewport. Apart from the new bookmarking system, we also have some new features that allow you to quickly jump in between nodes. So for example, I have a shader here with multiple map ports. And if I select it, go right mouse click misc and choose the jump to node input, I will get a dialog listing me all the map ports of this shader. And if I choose one of these, for example, the diffuse color, I will jump directly to the node that is connected to the diffuse color of the shader. And I can keep jumping. I have it mapped to a hotkey so I could keep jumping further down. It also works with radio nodes. So if I hit a radio node and keep jumping, I will traverse this hidden connection and go all the way back to my last node. And then if I want to go the other direction, I can use the jump to node output. So I'm going to use my hotkeys here. And you can see, for example, I get a little tool tip when I hit a node that has multiple ports mapped. So I can see exactly what the source connection is mapped to. So if I jump here, for example, the attached to port says diffuse color. So I know that my connection was made to the diffuse color. Next up, let's look at some of the improvements made to the radio node system. The radio node system was introduced back in Mario extension pack four in the first release, and it allows you to hide connections of a node. So for example, if I create an FBM noise here and just create a merge node and a second merge node, hook this up here and I want to use this FBM noise in two different places in my graph, for example, here and all the way up here. So now I would have a very long line crossing all over my node graph. And this is where the radio nodes come in handy. You can create a node, make a connection and then use the right mouse click misc toggle radio nodes to hide this connection. So I could move this up here 
attach it to my merge node and now have an isolated little chunk of nodes that I can move anywhere without this line that crosses over. However, the problem with the radio nodes was always that you have to move it from one point to another. So this has been rectified now with the latest release of extension pack. I can now create a radio transmitter node. So I'm creating this new node. I'm going to hook this up to my FBM noise and I'm also going to create a second procedural and a second transmitter. Name this one cloud and this one FBM and move to my target location and just get rid of this existing radio node for a second now. Break this connection and create a new radio node. Make this connection again, right mouse click with the node selected and choose Miss Connect to Transmitter and I will get a dialog listing all the transmitters in my current graph tab and the latest created transmitter will always sit right at the top over these dotted lines. So you can simply double click or select with your arrow keys and press return and you will automatically hook this radio node up to the transmitter. And now if I view the radio node, I get my FBM noise. You can always reconnect it obviously just by choosing the radio node again, connect the transmitter and choosing a different one. Obviously you can still toggle a radio node connection back on so you can see it. We can also now as an improvement select directly a transmitter node and toggle the connection. In this case nothing is connected but if I choose the cloud which has the connection and toggle the connection on and off you can see I can make this connection visible and obviously also works with multiple nodes. There's been a new preference added how to handle transmitter connections so when I Tick this setting off the auto high transmitter connection and make a new radio node and hook this up for example to the cloud. The connection will not be hidden but if I tick this setting on which is by default and make a connection then you can see the connection automatically gets hidden after the node connection is made. An additional feature of the radio node system is the ability to reconnect imported radio nodes to transmitters. So I have a graph here and you can see if I just toggle all radio node connections on, I have a bunch of transmitter connections to radio nodes. So from here to here. Now let's take a quick look at a transmitter. In here we have a checkbox allow automatic reconnect or node import, which basically determines if this node is allowed to reconnect to a radio node on import. So I'm just gonna select this part of the graph and then just file export these nodes. Save it out and then just delete this part of the graph. So there's no more connections here and now I'm just going to re-import these graph nodes. Scoot this back into position and you can see by importing the connections have been automatically restored. This system works based on the name of the radio node. So for example, if an imported node does not have any connection anymore and has a name matching a transmitter name, it'll automatically reconnect to a transmitter found if this checkbox is turned on on a transmitter. There's a global setting to turn this behavior off. If you go to your Mario preferences node graph, there's an allow automatic transmitter connections on import checkbox. If you tick this off, Mari will never reconnect any radio nodes on import even if a transmitter has this checkbox turned on. Let's take a quick look at a usage case for this system. I have an object here and a bunch of different bakes, for example an occlusion, a curvature and normal map and I have all of them exposed as different radio transmitter nodes and I'm just going to import a pre-prepared little smart mask. So this is a Dynamask node which also comes with the Mari extension pack and all the necessary ports that are used to make this node work are mapped with radio nodes and just by importing I automatically made this connection so this node is now already up and running. So I can go in and make adjustments to edgeware and stuff like ambient occlusion etc.